Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. David Jockers, and today I'm talking about six ways to activate autophagy without fasting. And so when we think about autophagy, it's this process of cell eating. Auto means uh, self or automatic. Phagy means eating. And so it's this self-devouring mechanism of the body cells where we actually break down older cellular organelles. We take the raw materials and we form them into new healthy cells. So we know when we're eating during periods of, of feeding, we are stimulating cell reproduction. We're stimulating growth patterns in the body. But when we're going through times of fasting, we're actually stimulating this process of self-renewal, this autophagy process where we're breaking down older cellular organelles. So older mitochondria, older endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, all these different unique organelles within the cell that are all vitally important, but become damaged from metabolic stress and free radical formation, oxidative stress over time. So we've got to renew our bodies. It's kind of like taking the trash out of our bodies or recycling in a sense. This is something we need to be doing on a regular basis. Fasting is the number one stimulus for autophagy. However, today's video, I'm going to show you six ways you can stimulate autophagy without fasting. And so when we look at the process of autophagy, we've got this isolation membrane called a phagophore that surrounds the particular organelle that, it's, that the body is trying to get rid of. In this case, in this example, you can see it's the mitochondria. We surround that and then we activate an enzyme called lysosome, which breaks that down into the raw materials. And the body will take those raw materials and form a new cellular component. So a new mitochondria, for example, a new endoplasmic reticulum. And the new component is going to be healthier. It's going to be more metabolically flexible. It's going to be stronger, more stress resilient. And that's what we want. So we want newer, healthier cellular organelles within our body to withstand stress. And this is a core component of what the body does. And so we know that autophagy has five powerful benefits. Number one, getting rid of senescent cells. These are these older damaged cells. And so if we allow these senescent cells to remain active, we're going to have poor cellular function. We're going to be very metabolically inflexible. We're not going to be able to switch between burning fat and burning sugar for fuel. So that's going to be a big thing. Number two is improving our mitochondrial health. And so our mitochondria will create energy within every cell of the body. And we want to have very strong, very healthy mitochondria Autophagy allows us to do that. We also eliminate viral infected cells. It's actually our body's ancient way of getting rid of viruses. In fact, I think it's the only real way to get rid of viruses because viruses are not really living organisms. Once they get in and affect the cell, they can lie dormant. And when the immune system is weak, they become active. But when we fast, we can actually get rid of these sort of these uh, infected cells. It reduces apoptosis. And believe it or not, this is important for energy uh, efficiency because apoptosis is an important part of the immune system getting rid of damaged cells however autophagy is more energy efficient than apoptosis and so if we're relying solely on apoptosis because we're not stimulating autophagy we use up a lot of energy and we also create a lot of metabolic stress and we can overload our detoxification systems so it's important to have both but autophagy is really key for keeping apoptosis balanced. We also, it also creates a stronger and more stress resilient body and mind. And so we look at a normal cell, we know that there's up to 500,000 DNA modification events per cell every single day, meaning that we're on, under this constant onslaught of free radicals. They say there's over 10, every cell uh, has over 10,000 free radical hits every single second. It's unbelievable the amount of oxidative stress we're all under. And so our body has to have this profound ability to heal and repair. And, uh, and that's super critical and autophagy allows us to do that. Here's an example of a young cell that's very adaptable, very metabolically flexible. And then here's a cell here, these senescent cells that are damaged. They've got damaged proteins in them. Um, organelles that are not going to work as well because, again, they're mutated or they're dysfunctional. So we want to get rid of those and form more younger cells. We know that mitochondrial dysfunction, when our mitochondria is not working well, it's been linked to many different chronic disorders. You could see that things like autism, Huntington's disorder, Parkinson's, 
um, Alzheimer's, Lou Gehrig's, fibromyalgia, cardiomyopathy, uh, diabetes. You know, these things are all associated and related to mitochondrial dysfunction. So more healthier mitochondria, the more disease prevention we're going to have. On top of that, they also help to, uh, again, get rid of viruses. And this is kind of the natural way our body gets rid of these viruses. Super important. Now, we've got a couple of genetic pathways I want to discuss. One is the mTOR and the other is the AMPK pathway. So mTOR is really associated with building and forming. And you can see here, forms new blood vessels, cell metabolism, helps growth and multiplication. If we're trying to really grow muscle or for a child who's growing, uh, we're going to really have active mTOR pathways. And, and, and having periods of time where we do have the active mTOR pathway is really important. You can see here at the bottom, if we don't have enough, we're going to have muscle wasting, bone wasting, right? These are, this is not good. If we have optimal levels, we're going to have good normal muscle growth. We're going to be strong and resilient. But if we have too much, it's going to accelerate the aging process, increase our risk of cancer. So in our society, because food is so prevalent, it's important that, you know, we're doing things to help actually downregulate the mTOR pathway. And that's what I'm going to go through today. And so we know that in general, high protein, high carbohydrate diet, eating a lot of meals, um, using a lot of branched chain amino acids, just keeping your insulin levels high in general and keeping inflammation up is going to activate mTOR. Whereas inhibiting it is going to be things like fasting, intermittent fasting, or things like ketosis or a low protein, low calorie diet. Um, caffeine inhibits the mTOR pathway. Uh, compounds, uh, polyphenolic compounds like resveratrol, quercetin, uh, curcumin, ECGC, which we find in green tea and chocolate, really good for helping inhibit the mTOR pathway. We want a good balance, again, where we're inhibiting this, but then also at times activating it. And a good way to activate it is strength training, followed by, you know, right after the strength training, maybe some branched chain amino acids, good healthy meal, but then also periods of intermittent fasting can be helpful. Now, if for some reason you're not able to fast or you don't want to fast, here are other ways to activate autophagy. You can do caloric restriction. So you just eat a lower calorie diet. In fact, there's a great program called the Fasting Mimicking Diet, basically five days, and it is a protein-restricted, calorie-restricted diet. It's more or less a plant-based um, a uh, plant-based ketogenic diet, that's about half the calories that you would normally need. So it's calorie restricted. You do it for five days and you're eating, you know, in a sense, every three to four hours during this, you're not actually fasting, uh, but you are getting cal a calorie restricted diet. That's also protein restricted to activate autophagy. Now in general, real food ketogenic diet uh, can really work because it lowers our insulin. And keeping insulin down, keeping inflammation down is one way to trigger autophagy. So eating real good, healthy uh, ketogenic foods and um, you know, not eating more than in, in general, if you're going to eat the normal calorie load. So if you're not a calorie restricted, I wouldn't eat more than two to three times a day in order to get good autophagy levels. Um, intense exercise, right? So exercise is a powerful stimulus for autophagy. Good sleep, that's when our brain detoxifies. Heat and cold therapy, and then also using specific autophagy activating herbs. Here are those herbs. Uh, quercetin, which we find in things like red onions, cranberries, and elderberries. And you can also take supplemental forms of quercetin. Six, shagayole, which is in ginger. So you can do ginger tea. Uh, munch on a little bit of ginger before a meal, which actually helps activate your vagus nerve and stimulates digestive juice production. A curcumin, which is the active ingredient in turmeric, resveratrol, right, which you can get from things like red wine, blueberries. Now, to really get the amount or the a clinical dose of these compounds, you're really going to need supplements, right? Supplements are going to help get you the clinical dose to really uh, to really stimulate autophagy. But certainly, using the herbs is beneficial. ECGC, also called epigalactin catechin, which is in green tea, a long tea, and dark chocolate, um, citrus bergamot, which is in your Earl Grey tea, uh, carnosic acid, which is in oregano, sage, and rosemary, all really good compounds for helping stimulate autophagy. We talked about caffeine as well, right, which is in green tea. It's also in coffee. It can help stimulate autophagy as well. So using these types of things, adding in these herbs, as well as doing periodic calorie restriction, like a five days a month, 
where you consume roughly between, let's say, 800 and 1,000 calories on a low-protein-based diet. It could be something like a green juice fast or a, um, well, it wouldn't necessarily, a bone broth fast will stimulate autophagy because it's low-calorie, uh, but it does have the protein. So you could do something like, um, you know, again, fasting mimicking diet or let's say you had a big salad with some avocado uh, three times a day, for example, right? Roughly 250 calories or so three times a day. That would be a calorie-restricted, protein-restricted diet uh, that would help your body stimulate autophagy. And the ideal amount of time, if you're going to do a calorie-restricted diet uh, in order to stimulate autophagy is about five days. Okay, so doing it for about five days straight can be really, really helpful uh, for getting this high level of autophagy. And that's based on Walter Longo's research and his development of the fasting mimicking diet, which is more or less like olives, nuts, seeds, different things like that. So um, lower protein, higher fat foods, plant-based foods that he uses for five days. Again, roughly that's like 800 to 1,000 calories a day uh, for five days, and they're able to stimulate a high level of autophagy. You can also, again, adding in these sorts of compounds here would be amazing for that. It would only enhance it. And then you can also add in supplements. Like we've got this supplement called Inflam Defense, which is my number one autophagy stimulating supplement. Very powerful for reducing inflammation. It's got the ginger. It's got um, another great one, which I didn't even talk about, which is Boswellia, also called frankincense. In there in clinical dosage, it's got curcumin. It's got resveratrol, a lot of different compounds, quercetin, um, rosemary. So it's got the carnosinic acid. So a lot of really powerful compounds for stimulating autophagy and reducing inflammation in the body. It's also got some proteolytic enzymes, which actually enhance the autophagy process as well. So taking proteolytic enzymes, enzymes that break down proteins will help. And then for some people, they respond best with our resveratrol power, which is really high clinical dose of resveratrol as well as quercetin. And both of those compounds are also good for downregulating oxalate metabolism. And for some individuals, that um, you know have a lot of damage in their body. Maybe they're suffering from fibromyalgia or chronic pain or whatever it is. A lot of these individuals have really poor oxalate metabolism. And oxalates are these plant crystals that we find in things like spinach and chocolate and stuff like that. And you can actually test them on an organic acid urine test, which uh, we do offer on my website. And a lot of people will have high oxalates and that can be a major trigger to their issues, chronic pain, um, issues with brain function, kidney issues, urinary tract issues. These are common things that I will see associated with high oxalates, kidney stones, for example, and using the resveratrol with the quercetin, really powerful for helping to reduce that as well as stimulating autophagy, particularly skin health. A lot of people will see like when I have individuals with eczema, um, acne, psoriasis, stuff like that. I love to use the resveratrol power. It can be really, really powerful support for people. So hopefully guys, this is a good training for you. Uh, I had wanted to do a live training, but for some reason had computer issues, but feel free to ask any questions below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do and hit the bell. So you do get all the notifications um, and you know when I put up a new video or when I'm going live. So again, hopefully this is very helpful. I appreciate all of you guys for being on with us and I wish you guys all the best. Be blessed.